you are a famed Falcons hater. Uh, I am a known Falcons hater. Is that the same thing? Yes. Yeah. What about it? Uh, do you feel like the NFL needs more hate? I think so. <laughs> I walk proudly through that airport, by the way. And they Atlanta, know. Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we hate you. I'm like, I hate you too. And it's respectful. All right. We are here for a special edition of the Meeting Time Show featuring Lenny uh, you, on YouTube. Joined by a guy who I've known now, I think, for like four or five years. It's got to have been longer than that. Has it been longer than it that? It's been longer than that. I've met you with like Mike Silver back in the gap. Wow. I, I remember when I first met you in person, though. It was at the Combine, probably pre-pandemic. And I said to you, this was so that was probably like four or five years ago. Cam, when are you joining us in the media? When are you going to be on a desk with me? And you said, not for a while. Yeah, not for a long time. But maybe sometime. Oh, yeah. And it's no longer a long time now. It's just not for some, some more time. I do want to ask you before we talk football, when you, because you also are a consumer of sports media, you got the shows on, I'm sure. You see, you, and you've been in the league so long, you've seen the way people talk so about the sport. What would you say is the number one thing that the football media gets wrong when they're talking in particular about rushing the passer? I mean, everybody gets excited about rushing the passer, but we get lost in translation there. Everyone's like, oh, he rushes the passer. Okay, but what else can he do? Elaborate. You know, if they, in, in the idea of, you know, the Pro Bowl votes, the All-Pro votes, the, the common perception of what an edge rusher is, it's these, you know, 240-pound guys coming off the edge that are just flying up the field at 11 yards, leaving gap integrity not to be a thing. Okay. You know, where there's there's such a thing as holding a gap, being able to stop the run, edge rusher, which the first word in that is edge, would be means you have to hold the edge if a run comes your way, and or if there's a boot or whatever it else. Um, it's just more than just the rusher part, which everybody gets focused on. So let's focus on the first word. Too much talk about sacks. No, I think sacks are always like glory stats. It's just like wide receivers who have 1,300 yards but only have two touchdowns. So would you say then like a player like – Demarcus Lawrence is un- is underappreciated, underappreciated because of how complete he is. Going right, with what you're saying. Right, Joey, that's just the, the first jo- one that came to my mind. Joey Bosa's, you know the you know the Nick Bosa's. Um, I think there's yeah there's a few there's a few defensive ends over the over, you'd look over and be like, well why aren't they talked about in the same realm of whatever it is? Because you know what, it's a flashy stat. Sacks are phenomenal. Sacks will get you paid. Sacks are a stat that have a little bit to do with luck just like touchdowns when you look around the nfl then in in that regard again you've been like so long so long. i keep mentioning that i'm like it's, it's amazing it's you know how when announcers talk about a football player in their 30s they're like it's a miracle that he's even it's out a miracle there. how and did he get out of bed this morning no doubt look and meanwhile i'm looking at aaron Rodgers like he's never gonna stop playing i was like he's 40 this man's amazing just did a beach workout with him not too long ago or we were in the sand dunes and Malibu and I was like how is he here why is he here and he, he crushed his work and I was like he's amazing go Bears <laughs> easier to sack though is he as he's falling he can like flick one in the air That's for true. like 45 yeah it's Aaron for a reason how much is that uh that ability to make those like off-platform throws because Pissed I feel like as a player well bleh, when he was <laughs> you know but like when Rogers was like I don't know in his late 20s early 30s whatever it felt it was a little bit more unique maybe then. I mean, it's something I've always associated with him. But now as I look across the league, obviously Mahomes, but it seems like there's more quarterbacks who can do that. I don't know if it's like the athleticism or the baseball background or the right. way they're the trained. The evolution of the game. like The evolution of the game. How much harder does that make your life? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you'd you hope for the, you know, the Peyton Mannings or the <laughs> or for sure the Eli Mannings versus, uh, you know, yeah, the, the Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes, the yeah. J- Josh Allens. Yeah, there's there's an abundance of them now, right? Um, that are able to like fall as well as like while they're flying, flick a fifty yard bomber. Jordan Love does it. He's no, always like doing the, no the fade away. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. That was that was like the name of our game in the second half. Uh, close your eyes and chuck one. What do you think of him as a player? I think he progressed after our game. I think we gave him yeah. confidence, which you never <laughs> want to do is give a uh, give a, a, a quarterback confidence in any game, but. You just talk, yeah, just that natural evolution. Like that's yeah. just where it is. Dak Prescott, you know, he's built like he's big. Yeah, he, he's, he's big bigger dude. than you think he is. You know, and as you see him time and time and again, as he's fallen, flick one out, and 
you know, somebody go catch it, whether it was Amari or Brandon, Brandon Cooks or, you know, the next the next big receiver. How would you say Lamb, at, shout out. as you, um, you know, enter the phase where it's a modern miracle that you're still playing? It's really amazing. Uh, how would you say that your game and your approach has evolved with age? I don't know. I'm getting excited because now, like, really? um, in my mind, I haven't weighed this, I haven't been this weight since high school. I left high school like 6'4", 275 pounds my senior year. And then, you know, college I got up to probably, we got big. Okay. We were in a 3-4, so 4-3 end is where you can be small and have fun and be lightning quick. And the 3-4, yeah. you have to two-gap and hold a B-gap and a C-gap, which means you have to be the inside of a tackle and the outside of a tackle. And you got, you know, a Polynesian defensive end who went <laughs> top 15 in, in, in uh, Tyson Olulu on the same defensive line. And then a nose tackle, which – you know, whether that was Mika Kane or Derek Hill, shout out to my boys from, from Cal, who were big. So we were all just heavy. Big, big pizza guys, big Chipotle guys, big, you know, you know, little Caesars, we taking down the whole, the whole, you heard me. We got heavy college. Yeah. And then you get to the league and you, you go back to being a defensive end, like a true 4-3, but you get drafted to a, a team that likes to play uh, under front with a... That was the beginning of your mm-hmm. time in New Orleans, if mm-hmm. I remember, 2011 to 12. Who no was doubt. the... Was it Spags back then? or was uh, It was Greg Williams to Spags to uh, Rob. Rob Ryan, and then... yeah. You have played for like some of the most iconic defensive coaches right? in the league. That's, and that's Spags such out a... there just winning Super Bowls with, with oh, the Chiefs, yeah. and I'm Arguably just like, the best doing it right now, you could say. <sighs> but anyway, sorry, you were saying... What? so. We, it, yeah, so we, you know, you just go from that, that uh, evolution of... You know, 275 out of high school to probably 295 in college to get back down to about 287 by combine, which was a struggle. So where are you at now? Yeah, sitting at about, you know, two anywhere from 270 to 275 right now. I'm light, lean, and mean. And so, I feel great. So you're on the leaner side. I feel like I saw, I know I saw reports, I think it was maybe Nick Underhill, someone who covers the Saints, hmm. was saying that you've been lining up inside, though, a bit this offseason. Inside, season. outside, where? Tell me about that, though, you know, because you, that's not... That's new. It's not, yeah, I, it's not new. It's just not a. a it's not a new commonality. You yeah. can say it's not a mainstay, but you figure you've got Chase Young, Carl Granderson. Carl Granderson had a hell of a year last Very year for us. Player. You know, absolutely. I've uh, been talking about him for years. Um, he's getting. He, hopefully, he gets the shine that he deserves because he puts in work. Uh, shout out to my dog, Carl Granderson, uh, defensive end. Not to be confused with edge rusher, but he's slippery. Um, and then you talk about Chase Young, you know, generational type talent. Talk what about is- him. I, that, that was one of the players I wanted to ask you about because he's had such an unusual NFL career, adversity with the injuries. You come out, you're so dominant earlier on, and then you're battling those injuries, and then you leave the team that you're drafted by, mm-hmm. join the Super Bowl-bound team. So, like, as the ceiling is so high with him. What are you seeing out of him this summer thus far? Yeah, to be clear, he had a year taken away from from injuries. So – um, not only is, is, is he fighting for every play, like we're at practice, we're always bouncing ideas off each other. Um, and it's fun. It's sort of like just refreshing to just know that there's so much you can learn off of each other still, uh, whether it's a rep in rep out, uh, we're always talking about each other, you know, talking, talking about how we can better, get better in a play. Um, it's going to be intriguing how you how you can even use all three of us. Plus, then add in former first or uh, our last first round draft pick Brian Brzee, who's a D tackle. He flashed a bit last flashed. year. He's Not an, yeah. So that was one plenty. where I was, when I was doing my Saints pro, I didn't really it didn't really register during the season. And when I was watching, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. like saucy, saucy in the middle. What do you like in his game? He's got quick feet, strong hands, and. You know, he's more of a finesse player, but he brings a lot of power to the game when he remembers to turn that on. You know, like, it's like, hey, bro, all right, all right, you've, da- you've razzled and dazzled him. Now bring dinner. You know, like, <laughs> go ahead, bro. Like, at the end of the day, you're 6'5", 307, 310. You know, like, give him a headbutt. What is it like being sort of the the senior citizen of the group? Man, like- I'm literally, I, I go between uh, uh, the older brother or the uncle. I haven't yeah. figured, I'm clearly not, I can't be the dad. Well, so I, I imagine you do a lot of mentoring on, in terms of the, on the field, teaching uh, them techniques. For sure, and that's that's exactly what it is each and every day. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, bro, like, how'd you do that? I'm taking that. Really? You know, like... Like, yeah. what's something you saw that you were kind of intrigued by? Um, I love the way Chase Young had... He had how do you say this? That sounded weird. I love the way Chase Young uh, gathers his, his swipes. So okay. he's, you know, whereas I'm so 
violent in terms yeah. of my swipes. Like I'm bringing swipes, my two hands from like hip side to swipe somebody across the body. Right. He's all in, in terms. It's just like very tight internal. So it's like huh. minor shifts. I'm like, all right. So it's like, it's a little bit more sudden and tight. So it'll catch you by surprise. I was going to say, is that kind of like the pass for sure equivalent of late hands on the part of a receiver where like the offensive lineman is just not yeah, set? Yeah, it'd be like, it'd be like the, uh, yeah, it'd be exactly. It'd be the equivalent of like swimmers when they are under the water longer. That's me versus like he's coming up for breath now. And okay, like, so he's, he's oh, sudden. Sudden explosiveness. Got it. Interesting. That's my Olympic reference right I there. I like that. You're telling yeah. me you were an Olympics guy before we got started. Yeah, shout out to my guy, Ryan Murphy Gilbert. Is there any me- uh, event that you think if you get, were given time to train and you could medal at? No. That is so appreciated. Yeah. No. <laughs> what do you mean? These, these, these athletes have dedicated their lives to their, their events. Shout out to Cameron Rogers, who just won, you know, her, the first what, gold medal for Canada in like 70 years or something like that. Yeah. Go Bears. Um, <laughs> you, really, you really keep track of uh, the Berkeley. You know, you know, when you see me, you see me. Like, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, Wait, but, but back to the back to the the Saints aspect of it really quickly. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you being I was joking about the senior citizen in the locker room, but that's fine. Uh, I can't wait. Till it's my time. Like the moment they be like, "Hey, Cam, I think it's time," and I'm running. I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna set it down. Um, what I is lo- it like though being around like kids? Cause they're kids. I mean, yeah, you disgusting. know when these twenty year olds come in, disgusting. Culturally, twenty one. Like, are they doing stuff? You just are they on TikTok? Like, what? What is? No, that we don't dynamic? have that. Luckily, we don't have too much of that. Okay. The, the, <laughs> if I if I ever walk into a locker room and I see a dude doing some dances. No so what? But what do they do? Were you, like what have you ever seen? Not much. Something? Everything's everything's sort of the same. Everything's okay. everything's kosher. Really. You know, like I think it's because of New Orleans area. It's it's a different vibe. You know, New Orleans is very home based. It feels like everybody's so southern. Like southern hospitality is real. The idea where you don't have to like put on these airs of like, oh, I drive this car or I have this watch or I have this whatever. There's none of that. You go into a parking lot and guys drive Kias to you know, Mercedes or whatever, whatever their car is, Honda, Ford. It's a regular parking lot that you could find in what well, uh, probably the ESPN parking lot is probably nice. I'm not even going to lie to you. You know, California, you guys got that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. The heirs. Anyways. Yeah. We don't, we don't, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't have that. Uh, so it's cl- so what you're kind of saying is like, it's like a low key culture. Yeah. It's it. And it's always been consistent. Like it's as consistent as it come. In terms of the vibes, there's always high vibrations. People are always talking, chatting. You know, the only thing that disrupts us is when coaches walk through. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't that f- the same for everybody. I want to go back to some of those coaches because you were listening there. I was like, God. Mm-hmm. I mean. Rob Ryan, his magnificent hair back at the time, giving out monikers left and right. What is your craziest Rob Ryan story? The bar is high, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> who, who knows? I mean, Rob Ryan is such an uh, electric person. I, I've got nothing but love for Rob Ryan. He was the first D coordinator that actually sh- loved the D line. You know, like <laughs> D, 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 other other D coordinators assume the D line is necessary, but this yeah. is like Rob Ryan was the first guy. Like you, you know, Greg Williams has a lot of a lot of blitzes, a lot of zero blitzes. Right. He like you know he's clearly favors his DBs. You know, a lot of a lot of DB blitzes, a lot of add on linebacker mm-hmm. blitzes. I'm like, bro, like, let the D line eat. No, you don't even know what that means as a rookie first, and then you're like, oh, you know, the second year you got you got spags, and of course, a lot of D line shifts and yeah. a lot of movements, yeah. and again, a lot of DB blitzes and some, you know, some add ins. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, gosh, I just would love to let the D line <laughs> eat, you know. And then Rob Ryan was like, hey, we're gonna use you, Akeem Hicks, John Jenkins. Junior Glad at the time, somebody else, it was like five D linemen in a package. And I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Everybody's getting one on ones. Uh. No, this is amazing. <laughs> like, you know, you spin around, you're like, this is my first 10 sec season. Why? Because it's just, he loves us. You know, you're like, it, it's, it's so easy to win when you're just fighting one person. Yeah. And then you go back to, you know, fighting two people or three people. What you, what you, what you, <laughs> and you're like, it just puts it in perspective. You're like, he loved us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what years was he the defense coordinator again? great Remind question me? who knows I don't know, I gotta put, that put it yeah put his man so greg williams was rookie year spags was so, uh, second year so rob was third fourth fifth ish okay. yeah so now that put that in what is that 2014 2013 14 15 oh okay maybe 
15 ish got weird because somewhere in there it was the DA takeover. I feel like it also helped that the secondary became so elite during that period. No doubt. And then no doubt. The, Onwards, when you guys drafted Lattimore and what year, I don't know what year that Marcus was. Marcus Williams, Williams. Tamar, Sean Lat- yeah. Secondary is still fantastic. You got, yeah, you got, secondary is always going to be fantastic. Again, you get you know the DCs, DCs that love their DBs. Yeah, it ha- helps when they're former DBs. Yeah, you know who I um I don't know how much you dealt with Aaron Glenn, but I, yeah, he's a guy dog. who that's my dog. When I talk to folks around the NFL. Obviously, he's gotten head coaching interviews. What do you think? As he should. He's yeah, I was elite. about to ask, like, what is it about him that is so, like, it, you see it in Detroit, but also you see it as when he's going to be a head coach. Yeah, just like him and, and Dan Campbell, former players, know the game, know what it's like to be in the trenches. And for for a guy like Aaron Glenn, who played back in the day where it was like double days, like real double days, the grind, and he played for such a long period of time, he has HOF-type numbers. So he has that uh, that respect from players automatically. Like, oh, Aaron Glenn, nah, bro, AG is a dog. Mm. And he still walks and talks and treats everybody like men, but at the same time, it has a high standard that you have to live up to. And he expects it out of all your players. What is something about Sean Payton that most people don't know? No, no, you know everything about Sean Payton. <laughs> he puts it out <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, he puts it out there. There's, there's, there's nothing like, oh, I wonder. No, no, if Sean feels like he should, like he wants to tell you something, he does. Yeah. You know, I think that's the greatest thing about Sean. You, you know exactly where you stand with Sean. If you're one of his guys, you know it. And if you're not one of his guys, you don't have to ask if you are. Plays out on the national stage, I would say. No doubt. What is it like watching him back in the league? Is that weird? I know we. we I know. I, I've been told by the, the fans in the city that we play them Thursday somewhere in October. I think it's like the 16th, 17th, or something like that. Like the 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 fans in the the the, the New Orleans Saints, Saints know when it's happening. I'm like, well, I'm just trying to get to week one. Look, week one, we've got Carolina. Yo, you know they're coming in our house. Who? <laughs> Carolina? Sure. No, Sean Payton. Okay, okay. I see. This means a lot. Okay. So week one's Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that did strike me when I was kind of looking at the NFC South and preparing for it was you got new offensive play callers across the board, Mm -hmm. uh, including on your own team. And they're all kind of from the same family, uh, which is to say, so you got Clint Kubiak with you guys now. Um, Dave Canales goes to Carolina. Mm. Uh, Liam Cohen, it goes to the Bucks, replacing him. So they're all from that sort of McVay, Shanahan tree, which you know, you talked about defending the boot. That wide zone boot run game, a lot of mm-hmm. motion. A lot of motions. A lot, lot of, lot of paint the pig and call it something else. Well, you know? I was about. I, I want to ask you though, like from, you know, in your perspective, what are the challenges that come with playing that particular type of offense? The irritations. The irritations. That's a, <laughs> because basically it's, what I'm yeah, asking. It's, it's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of motions. It's a lot of training your eyes. It's a lot of focusing on like, all right. Sometimes you can't just look at the picture, you know, because the picture is going to continue moving. Focus on what's important. And that'll be, you know, whatever the game plan is. That'll be either where one receiver lines up or one li- lineman lines up or whatever it is. You you just minimize your risks. All right, what am I focusing on? My tackle. What is he telling me? Everybody. What has is a, he telling you? Yeah, though? everybody has a book. Are you are you read are you uh, are you reading the pages? Does you feel like run pass tell like it's gotten harder like recently versus like ten years ago? Um, no. Uh, I guess if I asked a linebacker, it might get a little different. Yeah, answer. I'll say if you, like, if, you ask, <laughs> if you ask a linebacker, most likely with, with definitely with the shifts, the motions. But at the end of the day, it's always going to be the same thing. You know, I feel like I don't want to say like Mike Vick feels feels like the standard of revolutionizing on offense. But since Mike Vick, but that was more about an individual talent, like this ungod, like true. Where this what is, is Lamar more, Jackson? Well, yeah, right. What is Pat Mahomes? Mm. With like, what is what is Josh Allen? These are individual talents that you you once they come to a That's system, right. you have to change them up. It, you know what is Justin Herbert? Now the question: What is Justin Herbert without Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and we'll find out Austin Eckler and 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 the tight end? I always forget his name. I will call him Hunter something. <sighs> they they uh well they had Gerald Everett last year. Yeah, that's nice. nice. Um, <laughs> well, so you got Bryce Young week one. He had a um, bit of a challenging rookie season. A lot of that. Not. I mean, what did they protect him with? Yeah, no, that's you, what I was about to ask you. You were going into the season and knowing that you know they had, um, they had one tackle returning that they could rely on, and the rest of them were like, hmm. it, was, it was dubious. Right. 
So it's he was like, fighting for his life back no then. No doubt. It's something that he was uh, he was not akin to, you know? Like, he's used to having the Alabama starting line, who which each one of them are going to go in the first two rounds. Do you think this year will be easier for him? Or Absolutely. Better, yeah. uh, I think they spent money on their offensive line they this did. past year. They did. A ton like, of money. They're yeah. like, what are you used to? Let's go get that. Yeah. You well, you know? got, you, I feel like on your, your, you've got that one tackle, Moten. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Literally the only stalwart tackle, and he's it, good year in, year he out. He's good, yeah. So you feel like everybody else was like, all right, man, password, 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 but you yeah. can't do that. Well, that hopefully awesome. also they have receivers who can separate a little bit. So if that ball comes out faster. And the top receiver was Adam Thielen, which Adam Thielen is a route runner. Y'all are about the same age, so. In fact, <laughs> we're still going, still going strong. In fact, they got they got rid of DJ Moore last year, which is like, oh. <laughs> you take away the deep threat. Adam, Adam Thielen was the route runner. Yeah. And then what do you have? Just the route runner. It was a tough situation. Uh, and then they were like, succeed. <laughs> There you go. So Panthers fans, that, I actually feel like that sort of generosity is too rare sometimes when we talk about young quarterbacks. I love uh, – look, I love the idea that young co- quarterbacks come to the game, and I hate the idea that young quarterbacks have to produce immediately. You know, like, as much as it pains me to say the Green Bay way because I'm, I'm, I was born a Vikings, you know, yeah. like I was born in Minnesota for all four years that I was there. <laughs> but I was born a Vikings fan, so I grew up hating them. But Green Bay cultivated the last two quarterbacks that have clearly meant something to the franchise. You know, Aaron Rodgers had to wait, what, three, four, yeah, five years? That's right. And then Jordan Love had to wait three, four, five years. And then you go in there. You know, you can always – are always able to learn things as you go. But it's one thing to be like, here's the grease. Throw them to the frying pan. Cook. So, especially if you're – in that kind of situation, no right? Because Caleb Williams, you talk about Keenan Allen. Caleb Williams, on the other hand, gets to walk into, he plays with. Keenan Allen. He's getting they, handed they, the keys to they, the Lamborghini. In, in a top five pick, they go back in and dip into. Uh, a uh, a, Dunze. a, a, a Dunze. He's a good player. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, he's they've got DJ Moore. Yeah. So <laughs> he's walking into an elite wide receiver class. So um, Justin Herbert. One other terms. question about uh, sort of scheme stuff. So. Uh, not this year, but the previous year, we did a segment uh, going into the Super Bowl talking about the uh, Niners 21 personnel and how hard it is to defend and just the Niners generally are just such a nightmare. And one of the teams that actually well, handled the last them, time we played the Niners? Well, it was y'all because it was at the end of last season and you were one of the very few. It was a, actually maybe like week 10 or something, but you were. it was before they switched quarterbacks, but it was still Jimmy, but they had traded for Christian McCaffrey. Did we lose? No, uh, if yes. you lost, the defense wasn't right because yeah. your defense actually handled them. Somewhere in there, I think that was the first time I've ever not scored. Like I think we got skunked that game. Yes, that's right. Actually, now I remember it. It was yeah, like it was, nine to zero, and I was like, yeah, like the, we, maybe we came back. And we were like, we're beating the hell out of them. And we looked at we're, we're losing. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's correct. I was like, you know, we're losing. But the defense played them really well. Again, was going back to the sideline like we're beating the hell out of them, hand in hand. But I want to ask you because I think so much of I mean, it's they're just so hard. It's they present so many yeah, unique what was challenges. Score? Now I'm interested. Was it nine zero? Maybe like twelve zero. Ten zero. Twelve zero. It was. Yeah, it was. Why do you think your day. defense was able to handle them, though? I mean, again, when you when you stop looking at the big picture, when you stop looking at all the movements and just hone in on what what you needs to be honed in on. It makes the game plan a little bit simpler. Do you think then just like being able to play man coverage, being able to have a linebacker like Demario Davis who can actually. You handle Christian McCaffrey. Top tier corner in Marshawn Lattimore and right. a pr- prevalent corner in Paulson Adebo, who's He's had a, a stellar year last year and nobody's talking about it, which is still mind blowing to me. Probably a top 10 corner on both sides. Um, and then, of course, you talk about Tyre, Tyre Matthews, who's the honey badger, is just a ball hawk through and through. Um, and now, you know, you, you talk about Double D, Pete Warner. Um, I think they can go with anybody. You say Pete Warner, or if you, or you say Double D. Of course, you'd be like, "Oh, they had Fred Warner. We have Double D. So if you got one A and one B going at it, we're pretty much even across the board there." I was about to the NFL 100, which wow, let's go for that one. Well, I was gonna, <laughs> com- I was gonna complain because Trey, was- Trey Henderson, who had what like 17 and a half sacks last yeah. last year, was ranked 70 something on the list. So I'm like, how accurate are we? It's all over the place. Right. I was going to be mad about Demario Davis, but he actually ended up ranking pretty high. Yeah, I as, feel he, like as he should. He is – when we think back to this era of Saints football and why the defense w- has been so good now for really, you know, 10 years or so. I mean, I can't remember what year he joined your guys' Seven team, years ago? Something like that. But, like, yeah. 
2017? It's also, there's so few linebackers in the NFL right now who can play consistently at that level. For sure. Come downhill and you like, you get nervous for the running back. You're like, he might not make it. <laughs> How hard is it to have that level of consistency on defense year to year to year? Because you've been, because the Saints defense, I think it's been about six or seven years at least that you yeah. sort of consistently ranked in the top 10 Absolutely. most metrics. Yeah. Um, I was always hungry and wanting for more. You know, you, uh, we talked the first day about, hey, there's a standard here, but we need to exceed our own standards. So whatever, whatever has been working, we have been playoff list for three years, so scrap that. So let's go harder. I feel, I feel like it's I, – I almost – like the the for a while it was, you know, the peak of Drew Brees' career and there was the defense was kind of up and down and you are missing some pieces. And then he hits the end of his career and then the defense is awesome. Right. And do you ever feel like, oh, I wish – Just tug of war, you know. All the offense is just carrying so, so much. And then it's but like, then, all right, now the defense is yeah. starting to pick up his load. You know, for to 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 have a run, you have to have a little bit of both. Right, and you have to get lucky because it's hard to be good at both. Absolutely, because you got to hit in the draft. You gotta, da, da. No doubt, da, you, have, da. you know the, your your free agents got to hit. You know, there, there's a lot of things that have to happen, or you just draft Pat Mahomes. That'll do it too. Are there any defenses around the league that you like watching? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love watching Detroit's defense. They really, yeah, they're fun to watch. Um, what is it about them that you like watching? They're they're just aggressive at every moment, and they rush for. <laughs> yes, it's fun. So you have a like, yeah, I'm a defensive lineman, so yeah. I have a bias, an affinity for defensive linemen. You watch the Niners defensive line, um, year in year out. You know when it was Eric Armstead last year and Hargraves and right. Bosa, and then Young, Chase came over, and you just watch them go. You you watch you know the monsters. Uh, Chris Jones over there. Uh, and then you have George Koloftis on one side, on the other side, and it's like, how do you, you know, pick your poison? Those are fun. It's, it's fun to watch the games that happen, the one on ones that happen, the way the offensive linemen think that they're going to slide pro, and you know, the man beaters. Like side pro sucks, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, when you can get them, when you can get them man, or you can get them to, to, to just uh, to just sift. That, that's where you can have some actually have fun and you then you face a quarterback who doesn't have the fastest release in the game you know you have a quarterback who actually wants to sit there then we can actually have real fun and i'm here for fun quarterbacks are getting rid of the ball faster too fast. faster and faster yeah, too yeah, fast. yeah, yeah absolutely i mean you know you go from well, luckily tom brady's out because he had the fastest release mm-hmm. in the game tom brady would, would check that thing or send it in like Man, that, that's what made him so so hard to beat um it was just his mental process like that I can't even describe how frustrating that is. Have you guys played Miami in the last couple of years? Maybe, yes. I can't not since Tyreek joined. Okay, so you yeah, haven't. Not, not, not the last couple yeah, of years yeah. then. I feel like as a pass rusher, that would be un, just the most annoying team to play. It, it, I mean, the ball comes out so fast. What are you going to do? Right? Yes and no. Because, I mean, regardless of it, you, Tyreek is still going to take, you know, a few seconds to get down the field on some balls. Yeah. Uh, but you have an answer with Jalen Waddle there. Um, challenging. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, again, luckily, I, I believe in our our, our corners, anyways. Um, I mean, I want to do a lightning round, but I do have one last question. Give like what is to 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 as you look ahead to the season, you're kind of gearing up right now. Yeah. What is like the reason why the New Orleans Saints will win the NFC South this year? <laughs> Big team, little me. Okay. Because we all have the mindset and mentality that. It, we're going to do whatever it takes for the team to win and not necessarily the individual accolades. Okay. I like that because when you were pointing at that, first I thought you just meant me. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what, you? Me and all my, I mean, a lot all of stuff has to go right, Cam. 14 years of what, NFL football wh- wh- experience. Where do you think the defense will be better this year? Um, I think the surgeons of Jordan Howden. Yeah. Safety. That he, I, he was one also who I didn't know at all. Right, he's got some flashes. Now we just need a, we bit of a need, playmaker. Exactly, we need that. Interesting. Um, okay. It's going to be fun to see how we can just facilitate possibly how we add in Kool Aid McKinstry, how we add in uh, Alante Taylor, Paulson Adebo, you know, Marshawn Lattimore on the field at the same time. Wow. What what can't be covered? A lot of DBs who can man up. No doubt. All right, lightning round. Uh, you are a famed Falcons hater. 
Uh, I am a known Falcons hater. Is that the same thing? Yes. Yeah. What about it? Uh, do you feel like the NFL needs more hate? I think so. Um, <laughs> you know, I think in, in the AFC North somewhere, I think they, they get it. But yeah, they all hate each other. They so do I'm, hate I'm each mixed, other. I'm mixed about like who do you actually hate? Like you can't hate everybody in the room. It's just not possible. So you got to focus on one. No doubt. And for you, it's it's the Falcons. Absolutely. Wow. Plus, like yeah. a lot of Browns become Steelers, and a lot of Steelers become sure. Ravens, and a lot of Ravens. Patrick Queen. Yeah, like they all just sort of rotate. So, like, how much hate yeah. is there if you're all just sharing the same household? That's true. But New Orleans and Atlanta, like, there's that's despicable to trade they, over. David the fans Onyemata. truly seem to hate each other. Yeah, like you should <laughs> never like you can't be like, oh, I'm a Saint, and be like, man, I hate the Falcons. And the moment you cross over, like, I hate you now. Ryan Nielsen. Yeah, traitor. You know, just big trader. He's a good coach. Yeah. He's phenom- another one who Phenomenal I think. guy. Great coach. Traders activities. The man <laughs> went directly over to Atlanta. Like, Yeah. But now he's in Jacksonville. Doesn't matter. I feel Stained. like that D-line is going to really cook with him. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about... Um, Walker. Yeah. Heinzone. I'll say you talk about Walker. You talk about... Um, now I can't even... Josh Hines Allen. That's, I was trying yeah. to think of his, 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 new, yeah. his new last name. Hines. <laughs> Josh Hines Allen. Aha. Yeah. Big paid. They added in Eric Armstead over there now. They did, yeah. Um, so they've, they've got a formidable defensive line. Uh, and what is Ryan Nielsen? A guy who loves the D-line. He loves the D-line. He also loves big, powerful D-line. D-line. Yeah. Like it's, there's like a Hence stylistic. The R- yeah, the Eric Armstead. He goes over to the Falcons and somehow his traitorous, fiendish ways <laughs> infiltrated my guy, David Onyemata, and he goes over to he, Atlanta. He was good last year, too. Yeah, he was great last year. <laughs> It's just madness. I imagine Matt Ryan is a quarterback you've sacked the most in your NFL career. <laughs> I mean, ma'am, to, to say that he's the quarterback I've sacked the most in my career, um, there, he's, it's the most any one defensive player has sacked oh, a quarterback in the NFL. So, like, Sorry. it's just hard to beat that. You know, what are we, 23 sacks in? 20? What, what is it like when you guys see each other now? Uh, I saw him last in Super Bowl, and he, like, he sacked me on air. <laughs> and we were on air. He, nice like, he, yeah, he hit me from behind. I was like, man. I was like, hey, you can have all the hits back you want, bro, because I've hit you a plenty. He's always welcome at my house. Like, if you ever need some food, you know, kids <laughs> need some. He's he's put a lot of food on my plate over the years, so like, it's it's only right to get back. Who's your favorite quarterback to sack right now? Uh, right now, I don't know. They're all relative now, you know. Um, probably Gino because we could t- we could talk about it after. <laughs> <laughs> I he's t- surprisingly mobile. Yeah, people uh, underestimate his. Uh, but that's always been the case, his right? Movement. That's been the case since he was in college out there giving guys a slip. What about Kirk Cousins? You looking forward to that one? Kirk Cousins is just such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, luckily he didn't go to a trash school like my guy Andrew Luck did, because that was that was he's like on that level. Like you hit him and he's like you sort of feel bad for Does hitting he say him, something? but you don't. Kirk? No, of course not. But that's what I'm saying. Andrew Luck. Because Andrew was famous Andrew Luck, for the like. Like, like yeah, try and yeah, compliment. Yeah. He never complimented. Luckily. Interesting. But like you know. Kirk Cousins is, just seems like that type of guy. Like, he'd get up and be like, hey, man, good hit. All right, I want you to think carefully about this question before you answer. If 11 Christian McCaffreys played 11 Taysom Hills, who would win? In what sport? Football. <laughs> Who's playing offense? Who plays defense? Uh, they're both going to play both sides. It's full game. Full game. <laughs> I'm going to give the edge to Taysom Hill. I'm going to give the edge to Taysom Hill strictly because Taysom's bringing a little bit more power than Christian McCaffrey is. Okay. Christian's got wiggle, but Taysom has a lot of power. He is bigger. Yeah. Allegedly, this man squatted 685 pounds last week. Okay. I don't know if Christian's really? putting, I don't know if he's Christian's putting out that output. I'm going to say allegedly. I've seen him with five plates on going for reps. Do you feel like people don't understand Taysom Hill? Nobody understands Taysom Hill. Where, 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 I mean, where can't you put him? Yeah. If you asked him to be an edge rusher, he could probably be that too. Um, I see who your uh, favorite quarterback to play is. Who's who's your least favorite quarterback right now in, in today's right now in the NFL? So an active quarterback. It's been a it's been a minute. Probably Lamar because I I missed him twice last year. Yeah. Oh, no, two years ago. Was that th- three years ago? Jesus loves everybody. Yeah, the last time we played him, I like I hit him. He ducked under me. I popped up, tried to like slap his his legs, and he still got out and made a play. And the next time I got him, I was like half like I had an arm on him, and he was somehow able to sling the rock. Like as he was falling, chucked one like thirty five dot, and I said, "Wow, okay." What would you think about him coming in as over He's too Mahomes, fast. Mahomes in the uh, NFL one hundred? Um, he came up above. Yeah, I didn't even watch. 
I just saw it on the internet. Oh, man. Um, that Mel Pomones who has three Super Bowls. Listen, who people has, get bored. Who has done it, and you couldn't name a receiver from their. Oh, you could. You could name a, a receiver with positive image from their receiving core last year. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, there's there's memes about his receiving core last year. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there were a lot of memes. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it. Uh, yeah, I'm. A, I think uh, the game. Well, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I'll let you say that. Uh, as a Falcons hater, what was going through no. your head? Uh, infamous watching known Falcons hater as a Falcons hater I walk proudly through that airport by the way and they Atlanta, know Atlanta. Yeah, yeah they're like oh, we hate you I'm like I hate you too and it's respectful what was going through <laughs> your head watching the offense run a play at the end of the 2024 season from the good sideline. for us stop us if you can I didn't realize that it was like a victory formation it was like a knee situation okay, so you didn't know in the moment in the moment I didn't and it and then I thought about it and I said how devious <laughs> and I loved it even more I was like I was like oh we were going to take a knee. that's but they couldn't stop us from getting to the red zone, so they couldn't stop us from getting to the end zone. And honestly, if we could put 75 on them, I would put 75 on them. Like if if it was like 70, if it was 70 egg, and they're like, "Oh man, we should take a knee." But there's two minutes left in the game. I'd be like, "Nah, we could also get to 100 somehow." So you <laughs> run it. four four all go specials. <laughs> <laughs> do do what Jordan Love did in the second half of our game. Just start chucking them up and praying. Uh, <laughs> and they were answered. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say it worked. <laughs> Uh, rank your top five pass rushers in the NFL. Pass rushers, just pure pass rushers. Pure pass rushers. Um, not edges. Trey Hendrickson. Wow, you. Well, I guess your former teammate. He's seventeen and a half sacks. He's a good player. Year. Oh no, you're going five to one. No, well, I mean, just I don't know if there's an order yet. Okay. Pure, like pure <laughs> pass rusher. Because Micah would be if, if we said pure, like pure in terms of pure. pass rush moves, yeah. edge rush presence. Micah has the ability to be a number one, but I put him at four or five. Okay. Because he's explosive, off the edge, unstoppable, and he's starting to get a bag of moves. When he first got on the scene, he was literally beating. He wasn't beating, even a pass rusher in college. He was he an was off-ball be, linebacker. He's, he's beating people off of pure athleticism. And now he's starting to actually understand that there's pass rush moves going into it. So he's becoming art. That's right. Um, so there's so much room for growth. Then... Trey Henderson, his double swipe off the edge is stupid. Yeah. Um, and I put, I don't know how you do this in order. Max Crosby. Complete uh, his, player, by the way. His Very ins- good against the run, too. His inside moves are deadly. Yeah. Spin moves, crazy. Then from there, we're, you could just argue. You say Sp- Nick Boza because he's always active. Like, his hands are always going. I think Joey Boza is like, if you want to watch Poetry in Motion, you'd watch Joey. Because his hands are just like a thing of mystery. Like, it's a thing of beauty. Like, it'll be a swipe to a rip to an arm over combo to back to a swipe, push through. Like, it's it's crazy to watch his combos. Um, I always take myself out of it because I could care less about me and I'm all along the lines of just loving the art. Um, <laughs> but then, so... A couple guys in the AFC North who... Uh... Yeah, I'd say Miles Garrett would be probably, you say, one or two. Yeah, what about... Uh... That was five, I think. No T.J. Watt? No. So that's your top five? Yeah. Uh, he, he would round out. The, he would be in He'd for be sure just the top outside seven. looking in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Miles. Yeah. And nope, I don't know if I have a particular order. Bosa. Miles, Miles Crosby, Bosa, Crosby, Bosa, Henny, and then. Other Bosa. Yeah. Uh, other Bosa or. Micah, or Micah yeah, Micah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have an order for him, but like if you say pure edge rushers, now if you say who's a defensive end, then that, then that list completely changes. And I don't know but two of them that'll make that list. Really? But that's Tank? Um, defensive, def- yeah, defensive ends is different now. Like Tank would, Tank, uh, DeMarcus would be, but he, he plays now more like interior that's in right. terms of pass rushing. They moved him inside. Yeah, they moved him inside like two or two years ago, three years ago. And so, you know, then it's just like the edge rushers that can't. So edge rushers that are actually hold the ends. Then it's the, you know, Nick. Then it'd be Max. Um, then you, you know, you'd probably go over to the AFC um, and go for, I'm always going to forget his name, um, the edge rusher from Baltimore, um, Udo Nwazi. Udafe Owe. Yeah, there we go. Sure. Really? That's a, that's so a you're high. One. That's interesting. Yeah. Because that's then, a, he doesn't get talked about that much. Yeah, I, lo- I love you Aiden like Hutchinson's game. game. Um, Aiden Hutchinson. Right. Uh, and then I'd finish over with the end opposite of uh, Judon. And again, 
the name that opposite Judon mm-hmm. Uche. No, we go. definitely love not Uche. Uche. No, love Uche's game. Just as a designated it, pass rusher, not, not as a complete. Yeah, yeah, as a designated he can't pass stop. Rusher. No, no, he's no, no. But just yeah, love love watching him. He is great. He edge. is. Yeah, but yeah, again, that, that's just that's just like watching watching the game as it unfolds. No, I love that. I like that's such a good list because you, you got some big names, but you got some hipster picks in there. You got some young guys. Yeah. You uh, clearly watch a lot of football, which is, by the way, why really? uh, <laughs> me. Everybody should. But well, I used to surprise sometimes you're talking to players, and it's so obvious, like uh, you yeah. know. That- <laughs> no, I love the game. I love watching wins. Like I get after like the end of a game, like everybody watches their game, and I'm like, great. And then I look forward to like, all right, well, let me see the different sack reels. And then beyond that, I'm like, yeah. if I'm the team coming up, I'm like, let me see the TFL reel. <laughs> that's I, that's some sicko yeah, yeah, like, like, behavior. Like, <laughs> it, it, I feel like in my TFL. mind, it's so, I can't say easier to yeah. rush the passer, yeah, but yeah. anybody can rush it nine yards and bend a corner. But can you hold this C gap, play the B gap, and oh, by the way, convert on this play action? Or are you just playing the boot? Demarcus Lawrence versus the Bills, if you want to watch some yeah. sexy TFL. <laughs> <laughs> you do have an in-season podcast. Mm-hmm. You're doing season two. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. You know, you, you talk about off the edge with Cam Jordan. I mean, you, know, just, you sort of just lean off the, off the edge off of the your edge. chair. Careful. Uh, you know, Careful. Yeah, beyond, beyond just you know pass rushing, of course, and, and football. Uh, just talking whatever whatever comes to mind uh, with some friends across the league, which is a, a great time for me. And, you know, four or five, ooh, no, pre-pandemic, five, six years ago, uh, when I was having, you know, Cam's Corner on IG Lives with some friends across the league, uh, nobody was really trying to take the podcast space like that, you know? Okay. Six years ago, shite up. I'm old, okay? That was when I was in my 20s. <laughs> 35 in NFL years is no like... No is is archaic. Pretty old. Yeah. Of pushing 60 something you know yeah basically um but yeah so you look at the the landscape and then you know me and mark teamed up for trust levels for a number of years that's which right. was a blast I forgot about that yeah no doubt big trust on the highest of and levels. mark's out there now doing the media thing. mark is out there living his best life on the college tour you know salute to my dog marky marky v um but yeah it sort of just transpired to where it t- he he went he was trying to figure out his his next path and uh and I sort of spun off on my own, all all in my lonesome. It's different hosting by yourself. At least you get a feature, Lenny. Even... <laughs> Do you have a dog? <laughs> no, of course not. Bring on your dog. Is a I, dog. I've got a hot take for dogs that dog people's hate. Oh, so no. it doesn't matter. Just, I have four kids. What do I need a dog just, for? That's fine. That's I'm, not a... My kids are like, Dad, can we have a dog? I'm like, a rat? Like, you want a big, a neutral rat. Like, you just want... Like, come on. Like a, a neutral rat? A neutral rat. A so, neutral rat. Oh, I, I've seen those. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, it's a, a dog is... I get it. Man's best friend. But what is it really wow. doing for us? It's a two year old that never grows up. Wow. And I've Coming out anti dog, not anti, just anti responsibility. That, that is fair. Yes. <laughs> like, I don't want to feed something for the rest of its life. Yeah. I would eventually like for it to learn how to feed itself. Yeah, I feel that way about my baby. Yeah. I would love for it to learn how to wash itself and not have to take it to the doctor. Eventually it can take itself to the doctor. Guess what a dog will never be able to do. Take me to the doctor. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Your kids might at some point. That's gonna be a while. Well, definitely. My my, uh, you know, my three year old is potty trained. We're out of diapers. You can't pay me enough to go back to diapers. <laughs> I look at kids now. She's like, "Babe, don't you want another one? You would have to find another man." Um, <laughs> what is the number one? So my my kid is ten months. So we're mm. a little bit away from that. What is uh, mm. as we Sleepless enter? Sleepless nights. So no, we're good. We're going seven to seven. We sleep trained at four months and never look oh, back. Nice. Um. As we enter the one year mark, what is the one piece of advice you would give me? No, keep on pushing. You're doing great. Oh. Uh, it's it's the three. People say terrible <laughs> twos. That's not a thing. Three though, because three is they know enough words and they they're cognizant of enough like reality and like feeling to exactly and, yeah. for it to be all tapped in and tuned in. Yeah. And the, now like the no's aren't cute anymore. Now it's mm-hmm. a no. I told you to stop. And then you know you I'm have to trip your three year old emotions. So, like, <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't make you a bad dad, does it? Baby's easy because it's like... Yeah, baby just rolls around. It just likes food, yeah. ball, see ball, get ball yeah. mentality. You lay her on dad and she's like, all right, so are we done with here? And like, she really just wants mom. And oh. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't even... Like, we don't bond until they're, they're like two anyway. All right, guys, check out Cam's podcast, which start... Has it already started? Off or? the Edge. No, I think we're edge. starting okay. a second season soon. All right, check um, it Off the Edge. Yeah, we're, we're coming up. Uh, it's it, yeah. it 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 it'll be interesting because now I feel like this space is so so heavy. Yeah, you know, like but, you know. it's so 
shoulder to shoulder. Everybody has a podcast now. Everybody has a, a Twitch stream. But everybody not everybody goes has an active player in the season podcast. Is sort of uniqueness. To There's that. probably what like five of us, six of us, seven of us now. Well, it's know. so many. Like if when I first started, it was just me. All right. Well, he's been doing it for a while. He clearly <laughs> watches a lot of football. He watches TFL reels in his spare time. And I'm sure someday he will be uh, joining me on television in some capacity. Come on. Uh,